Bem-vindos a mais um programa do Here's the Thing, um programa em que conversamos com pessoas, com pessoas importantes que têm algo para dizer, que influenciam a nossa província e o nosso país com, com o que fazem e com as decisões que são feitas por essas pessoas. Hoje temos... Vou falar em inglês, a entrevista vai ser feita em inglês, porque é desta forma que que geralmente estas entrevistas são feitas e por isso uh, prestem atenção uh, porque tal, talvez se não compreendem bem inglês talvez vão aprender mais uh, alguma coisa. Um, today uh, our guest uh, is the MPP for Etobicoke Center for the Conservative Progressive Conservative Party. Um, she's the Associate Minister of Transportation with a focus on the Greater Toronto Area. She immigrated to Canada when she was four years old from Poland. And uh, we want to welcome to this program, Minister King Surma. Uh, Thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. Um, you know, it's, um, we are speaking to uh, what we call the Lusophone community, which uh, involves um, more or less every person that speaks the Portuguese language, whether being from Angola, Mozambique, uh, you know, mainland Portugal. That's the, um, that's the uh, audience that we generally um, speak to uh, at Camões TV. So we, um, you know, today that's, um, that's uh, who we speak to. As the Associate Minister of Transportation, do you, uh, you actually drive in Toronto? <laughs> Well, I do. I drive <laughs> and I take public transit. Ah. When I'm at Queen's Park, I take the TTC. Um, but when I have appointments and other things, I, I drive. Well, it's, uh, yeah, the, the reason I asked, of course, is because Toronto tends to be, um, you know, a nightmare sometimes to, uh, to drive in. Uh, not today, not uh, right now, but, uh, but uh, you know, in normal circumstances, it seems to be a very difficult city to, to travel in. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that uh, it's one of your, one of your pr uh, projects is to, uh, to ease a little bit of the congestion in this city. So, um, so at least, well, that's, yeah. That's exactly right. That's why we're very... Um, we're very determined to expand our subway system. It's a big part of our platform and our priority to get building. Uh, it includes four, uh, four lines, uh, sub, uh, Scarborough Subway, Young North, the Ontario Line, and the Eglinton West Extension. Uh, we need to build a network to provide more access for uh, fast, reliable public transit across the city of Toronto. And we hope that that will encourage people to get out of their cars and hop on the subway instead. Uh, and so we're moving forward on those projects and we're working with the City of Toronto. Knowing, uh, speaking of uh, transportation and knowing how long it generally takes to bring uh, these types of projects to fruition, um, are you doing anything differently to expedite the, uh, the approvals process so that these lines and subways can, can, can come into, um, in, you know, in, into action a lot faster than usual because you know between concept to to actually um, using the system uh, sometimes it takes um, takes a few years you know I'll probably lose the rest of my hair by the time some of these projects <laughs> come to conclusion. I know and that's a very common sentiment here in the city of Toronto I know people over the years have heard a lot of talk but not a lot of action um, and one of the things that Minister Mulroney and myself did uh, to expedite the building of, the, of these projects was the Building Transit Faster Act. So it looks at a variety of ways in which we can build faster, um, work with the city better uh, so that we can get shovels on the ground as quickly as possible. And we have three procurements in the, in the market right now for the Eglinton West Extension, uh, Scarborough Subway and the Ontario Line. Uh, to do the tunneling work and and the launch shaft work and so uh, we're hearing very good feedback from the market and so we're moving forward but absolutely right uh, the first thing that minister mulrooney and myself did was we sat down with our teams and we said okay what has caused a barrier to getting transit built in the past and how can we fix it what can we do better uh, better coordination in terms of development and construction and projects with the city of Toronto, land assembly, uh, utilities work, like 
let's all get on the same page. Let's do it quickly, efficiently, because the public, the public expects us to get the job done. And so you're very much right about that, but we're moving forward and we have a very strong partnership with the city of Toronto. Um, uh, the mayor is very, very supportive uh, for us to get shovels in the ground as quickly as possible as well. And so I think you'll be seeing dirt flying around before you lose <laughs> the rest of your hair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, um, I can say that. I, I will thank you then <laughs> or for... Or before my hair goes gray. <laughs> no, it will never happen. Um, no, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm happy about that because, you know, you hear issues regarding the Ontario line and the barriers. Um, in the city where I live, in King City, there's been some talk with Metrolinx, you know, and the uh, uh, opposition to land to land uh, acquisition and so on. So I guess you're gonna you're gonna run into these issues as um, as you go along. But uh, but uh, definitely transportation um, is very very important, you know. And traveling on Highway 400 every morning and every afternoon is is um, you know just shows that we need more transportation. Um, going to uh, to the greater greater Toronto uh, 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 to the outskirts, uh, let's put it that way. Yes, and and it's correct to say there there will be certainly challenges. It's not an easy thing to build a subway system in such an urban dense uh, city like the city of Toronto. Um, but we're playing catch up right now, and we need to build because. The traffic and congestion in a normal world, uh, in a pre-COVID or post-COVID world, is is just immense, and it it's it really causes issues to our economy. It makes life challenging for people. It really burdens people, uh, diminishes the quality of life. And transportation is something that you know every family uses. Whether you drive to work, you may use it to go to a baseball game city of Toronto with your family yeah. and so we really need to build a network to move people around efficiently and quickly because that's more time you get to spend with your family that's more time at home in a city like Toronto where you have uh, more transportation critics than than anything else and everybody has an opinion on on what's best uh, to be done uh, regardless if it's Scarborough or whatever other line uh, how do you manage to to try and appease all these the special interest groups that uh, always feel that one thing is better than the other and you know what does it take to make a decision to finally to say okay this is what we're going to do regardless of all the you know all the criticisms that uh, that are coming about well a few things I think forming a partnership with the city of Toronto um, is certainly very very important uh, we have to work together and you know collaborating and making sure that both the province and the city work together to build as quickly as possible is key. But I think everyone at this point realizes that it's the right thing to do. I think the public support is there. You know, the average Joe who just wants to go to work and come home and, and be with his family and, and, you know, may not be as vocal as some of, uh, some of the other folks or perhaps the media at times because they're busy working and, and being with their families, but the public support is certainly there. Yeah. I mean, all you have to do is look at our map. Look at how our map has advanced in the last 25 years and then compare it to cities across the world with similar population. And it just, you can see a difference. And people know we are uh, certainly that behind. work really needs yeah. to be, be done on this file. And it's something that the premier is very passionate about. Uh, even going back to his days working at the city, being a city councillor, um, his brother, Mayor Rob Ford, and, and now as premier, he made a commitment to the people of Scarborough, to the people of the city of Toronto, that he was going to build subways. And, and uh, it's a role he dis uh, he uh, allocated to myself and Minister Mulroney to see it through. And, and we're working very hard to get it done as quickly as possible. It's a complicated role, and uh, certainly we are fallen behind the other major cities, especially Toronto uh, being the fourth largest in North America, when we look at transportation systems, um, you know, compared to Chicago, New York and others, uh, we certainly can use more subways and um, more trains and whatever else to, uh, to keep us moving economically. Have the, um, has COVID-19 um, um, and, and this pandemic uh, delayed any of your plans um, to uh, to build the systems that we need to build, and 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 financially, 
Has it um, delayed a little bit since uh, the, the, the construction or the implementation of, of the plans? Since um, a lot of the money, um, you know, that possibly was budgeted for this now, uh, is there a reconsideration uh, pertaining to budgets since we're in such a, a heavy spending mode and deficits? Well, certainly in the first phase when things were quite uncertain and we didn't know how serious the vi virus w was, I, uh, as uh, the Associate Minister of Transportation, I was concerned about what impact uh, there would be on our projects. Uh, provincial and municipal construction projects, for the most part, were deemed essential. And so construction continued on throughout the pandemic. Obviously, there were uh, cases where uh, construction sites needed to adapt and needed to bring forward new safety protocols and measures to protect construction workers and keep everyone s safe and um, and adjust their scheduling to make sure that they monitor how many people were on site. So certainly, uh, the construction workers had to adapt, absolutely. But generally speaking, we're, we are on track. Um, and that is very, very good news. <laughs> Well, that sounds great. Uh, we're going to move away a little bit uh, from that topic. Um, you know, in another year and a half or so, or in another year, we're going to start um, a brand new campaign to re-elect uh, the, um, you know, to re for, for a new election. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, in 2018, um, you, you, you know, you beat a very experienced uh, liberal politician um, in your area, and um, which, was, uh, which was great. Um, uh, how do you see, uh, because of the pandemic, do you see the next campaign um, being different? And do you think that um, that um, uh, the Conservatives have, have um, your party has performed um, in, in such a positive manner that uh, the um, that the Liberals are still will be beaten regardless of the power that they still have within the the downtown Toronto? Well, I, I'm not sure I can speculate on any outcomes of an election, but what I can say is that we've done everything. We've been working so, so hard, I have to tell you, uh, throughout the pandemic uh, to keep everyone safe. And even when we were first elected, we worked very, very hard um, to bring in a new mandate, to make positive changes, to bring forward fiscal responsibility, uh, to invest in infrastructure projects across the province of Ontario, uh, to really keep all our commitments to the people and show that we, that we are a responsible, uh, good fiscal managers. And I think that was very important to people in the last election. And of course, the pandemic sort of happened. N none of us expected it, but we've been working night and day to make good decisions, to work with health officials, to provide supports, uh, to address long-standing issues in, in long-term care. Uh, we've been working very diligently to to uh, put together a vaccine, a vaccine distribution plan that we can, we can roll out very quickly to people. Um, and so I just want the people of Ontario to know that we are working very, very hard for them. Um, and ultimately the decision is theirs, but, uh, but we will continue to work hard. So why did you why did you choose a political career uh, or a career in politics? Well, I can't say it was something that, <laughs> that I expected to do when I was young or a teenager. Um, but politics has always been a passion of mine. I, I grew up in a family where my parents encouraged you know having those discussions around the dinner table. You know what's going on in school, uh, reading the paper. Uh, they always encouraged us to be very informed citizens. My parents came from Poland, which, as you know, uh, was a communist country. And so being in Canada, they really wanted us to be informed, responsible voters. Like, you cannot say to my dad, I'm not voting. Are right. you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a privilege and an honor uh, to be a Canadian. And so I was always interested in it. And um, and when I first started working at City Hall, I just I just loved it. I loved coming to work every day. I loved helping people. Uh, mayor Rob Ford was the mayor at that time yes. and I watched him I learned from him as much as I possibly could and it, it was actually Mayor Rob Ford that encouraged me to put my name on a ballot so uh, I'm very grateful to the Ford family they've always been so very supportive of me entering politics and uh, and that's how it got started and 
and um, I love serving the people. I think I can't say where I'm going to be 20 or 10 years from now, but I suspect uh, that I will always maybe, be maybe, serving the maybe, public. Maybe prime minister. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> but, well, uh, well, but I will always yeah. be serving the public in some capacity, wh whether it's volunteering or or working for not for profit or or something. I I will always be serving my constituents here. Absolutely, and I understand uh, you know the view of your parents, you know, coming from uh, Poland and appreciating the fact that uh, coming to Canada, at least they could vote. I mean, I came from Portugal about 52 years ago when it was a fascist country at that time. And, you know, you really had no rights, um, you know, in, in, in those uh, regimes. And then you come to Canada and we all have an equal vote. I think uh, it's very important for your parents. It's very important for me. And uh, that's why I chose this country. Um, to live in because of equal opportunities. I'm sure your parents and yourself look at it the same way. Yes, absolutely. We're very proud. We're very grateful. Um, in fact, my parents probably, uh, in a normal world, not in the last couple of years, but uh, Canada Day, they throw a big party at, in their home, invite all their friends and neighbors and all of our friends to celebrate being Canadian and just grateful that we're here. Well, I'm, um, uh, do you still get involved in, um, in cultural activities related to, to Poland and uh, get involved in the community that way? Yes, yes. I work with my colleague Natalia Kusendova, who represents the riding of Mississauga Center. Uh, she too is of Polish descent, and so we work together to make sure that the Polish community has a strong voice at Queen's Park. Um, I go to the John Paul uh, Center regularly, obviously not during the, the pandemic, but uh, to visit and to help and, and address any concerns they have. I'm very proud of my Polish history, and so it's a very big part of my life. Do you think, um, and we're having the same issues within the Portuguese, um, the Portuguese community, that um, uh, if we, we don't continue to work hard in bringing in the younger generation, into the cultural aspects uh, of our backgrounds that at some point um, the culture uh, will be diluted to the point that, uh, that uh, certain things will be lost? Well, I think, I think it's always important for a person to know where they come from. And I think it's always important to pass on family values. Uh, and, and there's so many wonderful things about every single culture. Uh, so many things that you can share and traditions that just make life wonderful. And so I certainly am supportive of always passing on that knowledge and information to our younger generation, our younger generations. And, um, and certainly I think celebrating our cultures and our history is, is very, very important. Absolutely, I, I agree with you. You're um, uh, one of the youngest female member of the Ex Executive Council of Ontario. Do you feel that there are sufficient um, representation of women in politics or in the executive life? I mean, there's been a lot of reports lately about the power gap and, uh, and everything else, um, particularly about women. Um, do you feel that um, the, the ceiling is still a little bit, um, needs quite a bit of work to be done or uh, are you almost there? Uh, how do you see this? Uh, how do you see this this point? Uh, these reports about uh, uh, the power gap situation. Well, I think I think we're making real positive changes. We had a, we in the last provincial election we have a we have a historic number of female MPPs in the Ontario Legislature, forty percent. We have very strong female voices in the Premier's cabinet. Uh, nine female uh, ministers. We have a deputy premier that's a female and also the minister of health who's leading us during one of our most challenging times. Yes. Um, we have the solicitor general who's responsible for the safety of on all Ontarians, Sylvia Jones, who is also very much leading the charge in terms of how we get through the pandemic. We have Minister Mulroney, uh, who's the Minister of Transportation, and, my, and myself, the Associate Minister, and Minister uh, Laurie Scott, who we're the ones that are responsible for building this province for all of the projects, whether it's building hospitals or highways or, or public transport, which I think you can argue 
wouldn't be necessarily the roles that females uh, would have been given in the past. Um, and so I think we're I think we're achieving a lot and I think we can always do better and improve and move forward. But certainly I think that there's a lot that we can be proud of. And so, you know, one of the one of the things that I take very seriously being young and in politics and having this responsibility within Premier Ford's government is I always tell young young females, if you like politics, don't be scared. Uh, it's certainly a very competitive industry. It's certainly a very tough one. Uh, but you have every right to be there and I encourage young women all the time to, to please be involved and, and certainly to put their name on a ballot. Um, on uh, March 8th is International Women's Day um, as it happens every year for the last I believe 44 years. Um, do you feel that um, what should women be celebrating uh, this year in your view? Well, um, uh, it's, it's been a difficult year. Um, I think celebrating the spirit of Ontario, uh, being proud to be Canadians, being proud to be Ontarians, being proud to be women in Ontario. I mean, look at all of the hardworking female healthcare professionals that have made huge sacrifices. Look at all of the female truck drivers that have been risking their lives and going across the border to make sure that we have food in our grocery stores and PPEs and, and medical equipment and supplies. Uh, look at the female construction workers that are on site making sure we're building that highway that's so important to people. Um, I think we just celebrate the spirit of Ontario that we live in a great place and, and that we need to appreciate women and continue to support them and make sure that they have the opportunity opportunities, the wonderful opportunities that Canada has to offer. Do you think, um, do you think society, but particularly men, really appreciate the sacrifices that um, women make on a daily basis um, when it comes to, you know, juggling so many aspects of, uh, of, 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 of home life and professional life and so on? Do you think um, uh, most men really appreciate that, um, that side of uh, the sacrifices that women make? I, th I think so. I think so. I mean, men are also fathers. They're also brothers. They're also sons. Uh, um, I think everyone can appreciate uh, the sacrifices that women can make uh, for families. You know, my mother, for example, uh, made huge sacrifices to, to raise us here. You know, she didn't get to pursue the, the dream job. She made sacrifices to make sure that we had food on our table, that we were fed, that we were clean, that we were doing our homework, that we were, you know, good, good children and, and uh, polite children. And, um, and so I think, you know, for example, my, my brother just spoils her because he very much appreciates that she did make those sacrifices for us. Yes. And I think, and he's married now and he has a, a child of his own. And, and so I think, I think we can all, I think we all appreciate what women do, but I, but I certainly think we should speak about it more. Uh, and that's why I think days like Mother's Day and International Women's Day are really important. Do you, um, you know, this, this year's theme is, um, uh, you know, is gender equality and, um, and, and honoring the, the, the professional w woman and the, and the sacrifices, I guess, that uh, they make. What, uh, when I say to you gender equality, what does that mean to you as a woman? Equal opportunity, equal access, equal voice, um, having a seat at the table, um, being a part of decision making, being able to be anything you want. Um, I think we're we're at a place where anyone, no matter where you come from, no matter if you're male or female, no matter where, what your beliefs are, I think you can be anything you want. Um, and just making sure that everyone has that opportunity available to them. What is the biggest barrier that you see um, in the progression of, uh, on the professional progression of, of, of women, especially at the executive level? biggest barrier well I just I think we just need to encourage and support 
I think we need to certainly encourage uh, encourage women to put their name forward, uh, support them uh, in whatever their dreams. Um, I think that's very, very important. I, you know, I love it when I go to a construction site and I see women. I love it when I go to a table and I see lots of women. And I think we just need to encourage one another and support each other. You know, no matter what you want to do in life, there will always be challenges. But if you have a family that's supportive, if you have friends that are supportive, your neighbors that encourage you, um, it motivates you. And Absolutely. I think we need to do a lot more of that. Well, myself being in the construction industry also, you know, we have a huge shortage of, of uh, in, in the trades. And uh, I, certainly w I, I certainly would like to see a lot more women coming into the trades and, um, and, and so on. Um, and I still don't see as many as I, as I think that there should be. Um, do, you think, uh, do you think that this is because um, the trades are still perceived as a men's world and, and women don't feel, may not feel comfortable uh, doing this kind of work? I think there's some of that, absolutely. Um, I think it's also, um, I think people people don't always know that it's 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 a very good job it's a job with lots of opportunities it's it's hands-on and i think it hasn't been a job that generally females uh, tend to lean towards but in saying that it's great and exciting work and um you know i speak to females who are in construction who are electricians who love the trades and love being challenged and love working on site and um, actually, in fact, I spoke to a, a woman who was in her 40s who just recently complete, completed her training to, to, to be in skilled trades. And I asked her, I said, you know, why did, you, why did you choose this? And she said that when she was younger, it wasn't something that females leaned towards. And she was embarrassed by it. But her husband pursued the work. And then she said after she had children, um, she just decided to go for it and she loves it she she's always loved building things and now she's so excited to start her first uh her first work in the skill trades wow. and so certainly i think it's it's been an industry where women haven't sort of leaned towards where it has been dominated by men but that certainly does not mean uh that you shouldn't go go into it i mean politics absolutely. was dominated by men absolutely and um, and now we have 40 40 percent women mpps in the ontario legislature and, and the know, ministry yeah, exactly and uh, and you know people i mean women like yourself should be congratulated for taking the step because politics is not an easy trade to um to get into but uh, here you are uh, you know um, um during your first uh, mandate that um your um, you know the associate minister of transportation which is a huge accomplishment in the community you've been able to secure you know, funding for uh, at least a couple of schools in Etobicoke. Uh, and I know because my office is in Etobicoke, so I, um, I follow these things a little bit. So, you know, um, I, I think for, uh, for being in, the, in, um, in politics, um, provincial politics for the last two years, you've, done a, you've accomplished a lot and you've done a lot. And, and that's uh, what um, International Women's Day, I suppose, will celebrate. It's women like yourself and the examples that you're providing out there. So uh, from my point of view, um, you serve as a great example for the younger generation to, um, to achieve. And, uh, and I want to uh, congratulate you for what you're doing for the, the community. And I'm sure that um, you know, you're, um, you're going to be successful in the next election and, uh, and um, to continue your good work and to ensure that the subways are built before um, my hair falls off. So uh, I, want to <laughs> I want to congratulate you and I want to thank you for being our guest today and, and for speaking to the Lusophone community and um, hopefully we'll see you soon in person and uh, uh, thank you so much once again. Yes, I would like that very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. You have a great day. Thank you.